What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Marble Cast. Today we have a special guest, Steve F. Carpetis, the owner and operator of Never Stop Grinding Weightlifting Equipment and Apparel Company. Steve has been in the fitness and weightlifting community for over 10 years and is a strong weightlifter. He has trained with some of the world's top weightlifters and has a vast amount of knowledge of the sport. I did forget to hit that record button for the video for the first couple of minutes, so bear with me in my slow start. But we hope you enjoy this episode, so let's check it out. What's up and welcome back to another Marble Cast. I'm Joe Marble, and today I'm here with the special guest, Steve F. Carpetis. I say that right? Yeah, that was actually for our first attempt. That was amazing. <laughs> F. Carpetis? Yep, very good. <laughs> All right, cool. So he is the owner of Never Stop Grinding Apparel and Weightlifting Company, right? Yeah, selling a lot of gym equipment. Gym equipment, uh, apparel, and does a lot of awesome things with weightlifting. Is a savage weightlifter in his own right, and uh, he's, we're here to get to know him a little bit. What's up, Steve? What's going on, Joe? How's the snow? Oh, you know, it's just dandy. Just two feet of snow dumped on us, but whatever. That's a lot. Yeah, that's why I moved to Florida. I don't want to deal with snow for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, yeah, you're in Florida now, and you, you're uh, around with a ton of awesome weightlifters. So, we've never really officially met, but I've seen you at competition before, going back to Garden City days. Back in maybe 2013, I think, I, I saw you at a competition in uh, the Professional Athletic Performance Center with Chris Smith's meets. You did those, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, my first weightlifting competition, I believe, was in 2016 okay. for weightlifting, but I've been in the fitness field my entire life. When baseball came to an end in college back in 2010, I went straight to the gym in tears because I didn't know what was next. Went straight to back squats, and ever since then, it's been fitness every single day. That's awesome, man. So your first Thank weightlifting you. meet was in 2016, so you got into it after college, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was uh, The first meet was at PAPC, Professional Athletic Performance Center in Garden City, and I did a mock meet at Ole Miss, and that's what gave me the energy. Oh, you know energy what? I totally to fucked up. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We'll have a little bit of uh, images. Steve was nice enough to send us some photos and videos. So that first couple minutes, this is going to be a video of him. But here you are. Now you guys can see him. Sorry about that. No, no, no worries. So, all right. So Ole Miss was the first mock meet. Yeah, Ole Miss was in 2015. And prior to that time, my goal as a strength and conditioning coach was for – as a coach, and I'm sure you definitely set the example as well, is when we're coaching people for a snatch, clean and jerk, or any movement we're performing, we're able to do that movement, if that makes sense. And uh, that's when I was doing CrossFit for a long, long time, because my goal was, for example, we would do a one-mile run with men's basketball, so they'd be like, come on, coach, run with us. So I'd have to be making sure that I'm able to run a mile under six minutes, so my conditioning was every single day, and at Ole Miss, I had my first mock meet, uh, you know, kind of like a practice where all of the coaches came together, and we just best snatch, best clean jerk, three attempts, and that gave me the energy just to pursue the sport. That's awesome, man. What were the numbers? Do you remember the, the numbers you hit that meet? Yeah, thank you for asking. It was a, I believe... Well, it's been uh, years. I haven't seen the video in a while. I believe it was 97 kilos on the snatch, and clean and jerk was 120, and that was in the summer of 2015. That's pretty good for the first try. Mm, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. And you, um, your numbers have considerably grown since then. So you start. You did. You competed in 2016 in Long Island. When did you move to Florida? Thank you for asking. I moved to Florida at the start of 2018 in January. The first week within a couple of days, I took my car, packed all my stuff from Queens and drove straight down here, and I've been on my own since then. What prompted that move? I, I did my undergrad in West Palm Beach, 
and going back to New York, going to Mississippi. I, was, I went back to New York for an extra year and a half, and I was just like, I, I can't. I don't want to live here for the rest of my life. I'd rather go down to Florida just because when I did my undergrad, I lived here for four and a half years. And, you know, life's always a grind, if you know what I mean. Uh, you know, it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. And, you know, I'm definitely a big fan of Rocky. And I'd rather, you know, like the snow, like that's a grind with a business. And I'm sure you know what I mean. Um, so I just knew I wanted to be in heat and good weather all year round. <laughs> Besides our hurricanes and water, but I'd rather deal with water than snow, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, just, you could deal with water. You just evacuate a little bit, but hopefully it doesn't do too damage but to your house. But the shoveling and the snow and, and everything gets wrecked, it's a pain in the ass up here. So I admire you for moving down there. That's, that's a big move. Oh, thank you. Miami is giving you an invitation. <laughs> no, I'm, dude, I, as soon as I get a free moment, I'm so down there. Uh, you're always welcome. Always so, welcome. when did you start Never Stop Grinding? Oh, thanks for asking, Joe. I started in 2013, and it just went basic with just t-shirts. And then, little by little, my, my dream was to put Never Stop Grinding on a lot of products, Almost everything that I have at the moment still growing day by day. So it doesn't mean, you know, everything's easy and smooth, but it's always a grind each day. And that was my vision because being in a gym my entire life, I, I, I say this to a lot of my friends and clients. I define exercise as one word, and I know I could definitely get a lot of uh, negative comments towards it, but pain and how much can you handle? And that's definitely a grind, and there's much more to the puzzle than that. Well, all these years of being in a gym during those moments of, let's say you're going for a new record, or you're going to attempt a new max strict pull-up, or your best, not you, but anybody's best ring muscle-up is 10, and the goal is to get 15, or well, whatever that number or challenge may be, it's going to be a challenge, and it's not always going to be easy. And all these years, I'm just looking at products that didn't really help me emotionally, even though I was still able to fight through it, and that doesn't mean perfection, failure was definitely there. In order to succeed, we definitely need to take risks and fail and adapt and adjust until, you know, whether if it's correct position or movement we're trying to achieve. And my goal was just to put Never Stop Grinding on these fitness products that we have here because that's how I summarize exercise. There's more to that in terms of questions and the big puzzle of having a coach and guidance and consistency and all that but that's just like my basic summary for exercise <laughs> yeah absolutely it's all a grind you have to put in that hard work and weightlifting is definitely not an easy sport to get into and to pursue so anybody that pursues weightlifting you know snatches and cleaning jerks prs don't come off come across that uh, that often you got to really put in a lot of work after you get a little bit of time in and it, it takes takes a lot it definitely does. It takes a lot of everything you just mentioned, having coaches, having people around you. It's definitely great for emotion. It's a, it's a big puzzle for sure. Yeah. It requires a lot of hard work just like mentioned. So you, you started the company in 2013. Was it automatically a weightlifting company or was it just a lifestyle company? Yeah, lifestyle. Just basic clothing, compression shorts, T-shirts, and that's all I had for until 2018 and so i got down here and i did my first import from overseas so when did you start to transition to like more weightlifting stuff thanks for asking joe it was in 2018 when i first got down here i was like all right let's let's take the risk and i took the risk and ordered a bunch of equipment from china and all gym equipment's made in china besides my sandbags and worm i get them from a different company i have a really good connection but all gym equipment is made in China. And uh, did my first import, got six pallets worth of just gym equipment, GHDs, training discs, the change plates, medicine balls, slam balls, and that was it. And year by year, just been building little by little. How is it like competing against bigger companies? And like, what was it like ordering that first six pallets like, did you just stare at it and go, oh, shit? It was, uh, it was definitely a lot of emotion and being nervous. 
knowing that you're speaking with someone overseas, you're giving all this money, and is the product gonna last? Is the how's the product quality g- gonna be? Because right. unfortunately, we still get everything from China. Uh, that's where all gym equipment's made for the for the most part. Besides Rogue, I know they have machines here in Ohio and building stuff now, but. That was definitely the nervousness, but also the risk. And uh, took it, and uh, it took me time to find out my different connections now. But I honestly haven't had any uh, any negative critique or feedback for the products I'm selling. Everyone's been happy so far, and I'm a firm believer in integrity by doing the right thing for everyone and being a man of my word. So. That's definitely my goal every single day, and I believe it's definitely creating a lot, a lot of smiles and emotion for people. Looking at a medicine ball, and you're about to do 100 medicine ball setups, and never stop grinding is right there in between each rep, you there know. You and uh, that's definitely my future dream to give that option to people for looking to achieve whatever goals they want to achieve. Yeah, we have a lot of your equipment here, and it's it's held up. It's pretty it's pretty good. Uh, the sandbags we use uh, once in a while. I, we use the uh, fractional plates. We bought those from you guys, and they're pretty pretty solid, pretty um, comparable to Rogue, and the price was perfect. So I was actually looking at um, your competition plates, but I think you were sold out of those. Thanks for the feedback, Joe. Yeah, I've been uh, out of stock for those right now at the moment. I just have bumpers about a month ago. Yep, exactly a month ago. I brought in 24,000 pounds in cast iron plates and bumpers. And uh, competition plates are definitely a bit challenging in terms of selling them. Specifically, not for a weightlifting community, but just your, especially right now because of COVID, a lot of families are building home gyms. So they're not going to want a competition plate. So my goal is definitely to get them in the future. But right now, I just have them on hold. Right. Did you get a lot of big orders when COVID hits? Because everybody was sort of out of equipment at that point, and all the online retailers were basically back ordered, and everything's been back ordered. Are you? Did you have that same like success? I guess because of the quarantine, or what happened there? Yeah, for sure. And honestly, it's still occurring right now. A lot of families here in the South Florida area, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, even South Miami, and many gyms. They're all, especially families right now, every family is building almost a home gym. Their wife, their husband, they don't want to go to go to a gym, wear a mask. And I, I agree. I mean, I think a, a gym right now is challenging for everybody. And it's it, it's tough. It's tough. But, you know, hopefully this COVID will come to an end, hopefully by this year. Yeah, hopefully by the end of the year, because, you know, it's it's been a little bit tough as a gym owner. For right now, we're making it work. Our community is very strong, so we're we're supportive, and everybody's doing the right thing. But it's definitely we definitely took a hit, and it's you have to adjust. So that's why we're sort of a little bit more online now, a little more um, reaching out more through different portals, and you know you try to expand as best you can. That's a, an amazing, successful story of never giving up, and hard work pays off, and staying committed to your vision and your dreams of what you want to do in life because over here i've it's been story after story of gyms closing and yeah. not saying they quit or gave up or nothing like that but it's a grind the landlord wants his check yep you know and uh they just want they want the money it's the first pay and it's very rough to find a landlord who's adjustable uh just from my experience with different landlords and it's, it's tough, but it's great to see that you're moving forward with what you want to do in life. It's very inspiring. Yeah, and hopefully we can always work together in the future doing other your equipment and everything out here because I'm out of competitions coming up. We have, you know, regular gym classes, all that stuff. So I'm happy to rep your brand. Mm, that's and awesome. On that much. note, you hang out with a lot of really big-time weightlifters. I think you're training with Fernando Reyes. Your apparel is all over Muhammad Ehab. You've been all over the Klokov seminars. Talk to me about how, how you got in touch with these people and got together with them and made these connections. Thank you for asking, Joe. I met Dmitry Klokov when I first committed to weightlifting after Ole Miss. I literally went on YouTube and typed in Olympic weightlifting. The first or second video was 
Dmitry Klokov. I watched the video, it was about an hour long, and when I was watching it, I had a thought of saying, I want to be like him. Not in terms of how much weight he has lifted, but I want to see what he knows about weightlifting. So I found out that he was a Russian weightlifter and all of his biography. I contacted him on Instagram, he replied, I got his number. And then a year after that, we did our first seminar together in New York at my weightlifting gym that I had in 2016. I had it open called NSG Fitness Center for eight months. And after that, we've done five seminars total together, 12 hours each seminar, Saturday and Sunday. So I've been, uh, he's still my friend. We still talk to this day. And Dmitry Klokov, I can honestly say, without Dmitry Klokov, without Vasily Polonikov, without Fernando Reyes, without Mohamed Ihab, and many other people, great friends, I wouldn't have achieved. I did the work, but each professional athlete provided guidance, provided an adjustment, gave me information that helped me achieve what I achieved. However, we have to do the work as athletes to achieve whatever you want, but by having guidance that is accurate is going to definitely help. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, and, wild because you've been you've been hanging out with these awesome weightlifters, and that's that's a huge advantage. How did you get connected to Fernando down in Miami? Was he just hanging out, and you went to his gym? Is this your gym? Yeah, thanks for asking, Joe. So he was coaching with his brother at Farino Sports Fitness Club, and when I came down here to Miami, I heard about that gym and that he was training there, and I saw it on Instagram, I believe. And I was living in Fort Lauderdale for the moment for five months until I got my first apartment. And then once I saw him there, I was completely sold just to go there and see his example. And I definitely learned a lot from him for an Olympic weightlifting perspective. And being able to see him snatch 190 kilos, 195 kilos, clean and jerking, 220 uh, it was that was that was great to see his example, but also see what type of information he's been living with as a professional Olympic weightlifter. Yeah, what is it like being in that room and just watching a, an athlete of that caliber just destroy weight? <laughs> it was definitely something special and a lot of emotion. It was it was definitely challenging, one hundred percent. When I got to Farino's compared to what I was doing before was I was following Dmitry Klokov's program. I was paying him. He was being my coach, sending me week, uh, weekly programs and sending him videos. And then the hardest part was being able to see what Fernando was doing. And I followed his program for two years, and I could honestly say it was very difficult, but his program is what got my numbers up. We were snatching four times a week, clean and jerking twice a week. And uh, just a short template of what he taught me was 10 training sessions per week, two Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, one Thursday and Saturday. And we were in the, in the morning, uh, just to give a basic template, I won't mention all exercises, but the snatch and clean and jerk. Monday in the morning would be snatch, PM, clean and jerk, and other barbell movements, accessory movements. Tuesday would be power snatch. And at nighttime would be split jerk. Wednesday would be cleans. Thursday would be power snatch, uh, power clean, push press. And then Friday would be clean and jerk in the morning. And then at nighttime would be back squats. And then Saturday snatch again. And it definitely sounds easier said than done, but that I definitely took a lot of hits with that in terms yeah. of my body pain and a lot of a lot of strain for sure. But I could honestly say. That template right there, I'm not saying that's the template for everybody, but within two years of following that template, my best clean uh, before Fernando, or best clean jerk, was 140, and my snatch was 107. And within two years of doing that program consistently, it got my snatch to, in training, 121 and 160 for clean and jerk. I saw that monster clean and jerk. That's awesome, man. 
How often were you squatting during those 10 sessions? Sure. Uh, so on, on Monday during the PM after clean and jerk, we had back squats and it would be a lot of volume, like a five by five. And then on Tuesday, after the split jerks for the PM, we would do front squat. And then Wednesday, we, we would do dips, very excessively heavy before the split jerks. Like I, I went up to 320 kilos for three dips, beltless. And then we would go on to split jerks. On Wednesdays, we would do front squats after the clean. And then on Friday, PM, back squat. And that would be the weekly squat routine. It's almost every day. It was, yeah, it was definitely, it was a lot. His program, I could honestly say, got my numbers up. And technical and recovery, I learned a lot from Dmitry. Banya, that's the uh, name in Russian. Have you, do you have a Banya near your gym? or have Yeah, you it's about 10 minutes away. Oh, nice, that's great. Yeah, there's a Banya here at Miami Beach, and I went to the Banya in New York City uh, once a week, but when I was down here, honestly, I was going every night on average to almost every other day. I was there four to five days a week minimum because of how much pain my body was in just because of the amount of training I was doing. I mean, snatching four days a week. You're gonna, you're, anybody's gonna take a lot of, a lot of hits. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. It. A lot. <laughs> like, I lift every day. I lift heavy every day. But I don't have the time to go to a Russian bathhouse. So basically, I just take a nap and have some espresso. I'm back at it, whatever it is. But I don't lift sure. for more than 20, 30 minutes at a time because I'm in and out of the office. I'm coaching classes. So my window of energy is about 20 minutes big. If I can hit something good in that 20 minutes, awesome. If I can't, I move on. It is what it is. So I, sure. that's kind of the way I train. And if you're in the gym all the time, it really works. But if you're not in the gym all the time, then you have to sort of scale that back. And you have to figure out where your energy is and where, where the weights should be based on that. So with your program and how you did it, when you were doing 5x5, five five, were there certain percentages you had to hit? Or was it like go up to something that feels good and repeat? Something like we, that. It would be a combination of, yeah, no, that's a great question. And thank you for sharing more of your story of what your weekly routine is. It's definitely a grind being able to train, have a gym, all these clients, nonstop coaching. It's a grind. It definitely sure. is. Um, so in terms of uh, percentages, from my experience, it wasn't so much percentages. It would be what did we achieve last week and doing a little bit more the following week yeah and depending on when your competition is right so the further the competition the more volume for both your movements for all of your movements so if we were doing let's say if we were three months or three months away from competition back squats we would do a four by three three by three with pauses starting let's say at like 150 three sets of three three second pause and we're pausing each three reps from clock cough side what i would what i was doing was maximum one pause for doing back squat pause we're doing one okay but with fernando he would make me do three pauses three second holds three sets of three and i remember the first week i tried that and <laughs> after each weight my legs were just shaking and that definitely got my legs strong step by step and if we did let's say 150 for three by three the next week 160 Right. And if I got three reps and then two and two, you would say that was fine. But that would be the goal and little by little just increasing. Right. That's a, I'm, I'm right there with you. I've, the, you have to have a starting point where you can definitely hit it and then you just keep continuously building until you peaked for that competition. So I, I, I'm all about it. Yeah, that's definitely a great mindset for sure. Absolutely. Like I kind of mix in with uh, your Klokov idea and uh, the Fernando idea where it's like, we're going to go to a point and move on. That's kind of where I get to. So I'll build up to a heavy triple pause, but it'll be one set. I won't be repeating. If I do repeat, it means I built up to something heavy, and those are my drop sets. So I sort of go to daily maxes in a sense. 
Yeah, it's definitely a great way to do it. Well, after meeting also Mohammed Ehab, there's like the 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 term like there's no one way to skin a cat type of right. thing. Same thing with weightlifting. There's so many different ways. When I went to Egypt, which was a dream come true, and being able to and Mohammed Ehab is still my friend. I actually did one seminar with him at a great friend of mine, Dan Casey, New York Weightlifting Academy. Yep, I'm great friends friend with Dan mine. Casey. Uh, great, great friend of mine. Uh, he's a great coach as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mohammed Ehab, when I was telling him Fernando's program in Egypt, they don't really snatch and clean and jerk weekly. It's only close to competition. And you're doing all accessories prior to competition. When you're close to competition, then we're going to do regular snatch and clean and jerk, depending on, you know, where the competition is and time and so, so forth. But they're not doing snatch and clean and jerks three months out from competition. They're not doing that. They're doing a lot of accessories. Right. And a lot of volume, a lot of volume. Nando's template of what I learned was keeping it classic. And, I mean, Mohammed Ehab still holds the world record uh, currently right now is 173 kilos, 81 body weight, 81 kilos body weight. So there's no one way to skin a cat, uh, for sure. Yeah, and, I think the, you know, the way to get stronger is to keep adding weight. However you do that, do it. And what works, works. So add, add a ton of volume. Just keep adding weight to that volume. It is what it is. I think we, it's, if you got to have strong legs, you got to have a strong body, you got to have a strong mind for weightlifting. So. Absolutely. And definitely being able to have a coach during that time and recovery is so important. When I was in Egypt, I was smiling every single day. This is the routine for two weeks. Wake up. We would, some days it would be three training sessions, so, and most of the days were two, but sometimes we had three uh, with one or two days off during the week. And if we had three training sessions, for example, we'd wake up, we'd go to the track, walk a quarter of a mile, go into the weight room and do all body weight exercises, core, back, push-ups, just all body weight exercises for about an hour. And then we would go get breakfast, take a nap, training two would be at 11 around 11 a.m., 11.30. And then after training two was finished from weightlifting, we would go back to our rooms. Lunch was at two. After lunch, finishing around 3, 3.30, go back to our rooms for another nap. And then training three would be at 7 p.m. Once we're finished with training three, we go to our rooms and then we go for dinner. And that was the same routine for two weeks. And Mohammed Ehab said, I've been here for 15 years doing this. And I was like, wow. You lived a weightlifter's <laughs> wow. life. That's awesome, man. So that's two weeks of yeah. living like a weightlifter. Yep, exactly. And, you know, I'm not saying it's very difficult to do that here in America. But what I saw there compared to what we have here, it doesn't, it's, it's very, very tough to be able to live that type of lifestyle. You either need support financially from your family in order to do exactly that or being able to do like what you're doing the grind of being able to train business coach and doing all that it's it's very very difficult here compared to what i saw in egypt i was just like yeah this doesn't exist i don't believe it's, it's really here. hard here in the states for sure like you have to I, have I, uh, a ton of money or have some sort of income coming in otherwise you have to work. Everybody's got to pay bills. Yep, absolutely. The bills never stop here, unfortunately. And over <laughs> there, you don't have one bill. And I literally mean that. You are just training, eating, sleeping, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. That's, it was cool that's, to see. That's a lot it of was fun. Cool. That's why I was smiling so much because I'm just like, nope, doesn't, doesn't exist in America. <laughs> no, it's very difficult out here for sure. We should yeah. uh, have it a little bit better, but, you know, I think we have to find that balance, and that's the hard part. Is we have to find that balance of when we can push it and when we can scale back. That's why I like the daily max routine because I'm going to build up to whatever I can for that day or that moment because even any time of day, and if you train in three times a day, you can hit a snatch three times at different times of the day, and they'll be completely different because you'll have different energy levels, and I, I do that all the time here. 
I'll squat heavy in the morning. I'll squat heavy in the afternoon. Then I'll squat heavy at night. And at night will be my best one because now I'm loose and I'm the end of the day. I don't have to work really. So, like, it, it all depends on your stress levels going into that workout and how you uh, how you deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. I totally I agree with you 100%. And over there, I would definitely say, you know, I'm not too sure. I want to say what their stress levels are. But their main focus every day is training. Yeah. Over here, we have the tradition of school, playing a sport. And then once we all get to a certain age, we need to be able to work to pay bills, whether if it's for business or whatever we're doing in life. But over there, I don't want to say what's after their life, but during their present training, that doesn't, that doesn't exist in anybody there. The, yeah. the main stress every day and focus and pressure is just training, 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 Olympics, Worlds, and focusing on these competitions. That's their main goal. And it was it was amazing to see that picture, being able to see what these athletes are doing. And now I could understand more why they're achieving the weights they're achieving. With the all-year-round work, you can get a massage whenever you want. Massages cost zero dollars. They don't have bills. It's just training, eat, sleep. That's it. That's awesome. <laughs> Let me ask you this. When you were out there, did he make you do those crazy barbell movements that he posts on Instagram where he has six barbells attached to him and he's jumping around like a frog? <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, he didn't make me do that specifically, <laughs> but when we did our first weightlifting seminar together, it was actually uh, about a year ago, exactly a year ago, I brought him to Dan Casey's gym, New York Weightlifting Academy, which was another – dream come true and I really appreciate Dan being able to provide me that opportunity to be able to set up the seminar and bring Ehab here from Egypt and he made all of the participants do that. That's funny. <laughs> I have a, a lot of photos on my computer and it was uh, great to see and everyone was just, yeah, it, it was great, a different type of uh, shock but uh, it was great to see that. Yeah, it's fun to just screw around and break the tension. Just, mm -hmm. let's, let's have a little fun before we get to work and that's kind of fun. Yeah, absolutely. And at the end of the day, what he was telling me was this is position for snatch, being able to keep a barbell overhead, behind your neck, in front, and being able, he's trying to teach people this position. And I know it's a little bit extreme, right? but like we were just saying, being able to put a smile and make people laugh is definitely adequate. Yeah. And at the end of the day, guys, it's weightlifting. It's fun. It's a recreational sport, especially here in the States if you're just going to the gym and moving around. So have a little fun with it from time to time. Your lifts will go up a lot, lot more uh, frequently, I promise. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Steve, we're going to close this one out. Thank you for joining me, man. This was awesome. It was actually a pleasure to talk to you and kind of meet you for the first time. So thank you for coming on. Thank you, Joe. It was a great meeting you too. And, you know, I really appreciate the opportunity, trust, and being able to share my story. I'm very thankful and grateful. Uh, no one, honestly, I, I rarely get a question about weightlifting nowadays. It is what it is. I, I achieved it, and that's it, you know, and it's a video I get to look at from time to time. But, you know, I really appreciate your concern, asking questions, and I hope some of the information I provided maybe asked even some questions you had over the years or anything like that, and I'm very grateful. Thank you, Joe. Thank you Thank for everything. You. All right, guys, if you need any weightlifting equipment, head over to NeverStopGrinding.com. The link is in the description. Thank you, Steve, once again. I'm Joe Marble. I've been your host. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, CrossFit Dark Athletics, and leave us a comment if you enjoyed this Marblecast. Age is inevitable. Weakness is not. So get out there and live some shit, guys. Thank you for listening. See you later, Steve. Thank you so much. Thanks, Joe. All right, brother. Thanks for watching today's Marblecast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any content. Check out our Spreadshirt shop to grab some swag. And if you would like to support the Marblecast, please head over to anchor.fm. All of the links are in the description, and it helps us out to keep the channel running. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time.